Welcome to Make Something with me, David Picciuto, and today I'm going to show you how to make picture frames and how to professionally match and mount your artwork and photographs. Check it. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut all our boards to width. I want a frame size of two inches wide. There is a formula for figuring out how much wood you need for a picture frame. We're not going to go over that just yet. We'll do that at the end of the video because I don't want to scare you away with algebra. We're going to cut our rabbit. I have my blade set to a quarter inch high and my fence set to a quarter of an inch. And we gotta do this in two passes. For most cases, a quarter of an inch rabbit will be good enough for your artwork. If you're dealing with something a little bit thicker, you might have to go a little bit deeper. So we'll do one pass that's going to put a groove in the board and then we'll come through a second time to cut that piece off. So now we're gonna cut this piece off. I want this piece, this loose piece, to be on the left side of the table saw fence and not cut this way because what can happen is it'll get trapped between the fence and the board and come shooting out at you. So I've readjusted the height and my fence and we're gonna cut this off. So we have all of our rabbits cut over in a table saw. Just wanted to let you know, you can do this on the router. I always prefer to cut the rabbits on the table saw. I think it's just easier. I'm gonna try not to use the router at all today to show you how to make picture frames just on the table saw. In a future video, we're gonna use the router to do some advanced profiles. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little 45 degree chamfer on here. This is just a decorative thing. Nothing too complicated. I like my frames nice and simple. So now it is time to cut the four sides for the picture frame. I have this handy jig right here that is made just for picture framing. I have a video on the making of this jig that'll be at the end of the video and down in the description. The great thing about this jig is, is it measures the inside of the rabbit. So there's no fancy math involved. So the frame sits on top of the ruler here and I can set my stops to the exact size of our artwork. So if our artwork is 11 by 14, I can set my stops at 11 inches and 14 inches. If you don't have this jig, there's a little bit of math involved. So the first picture frame I'm going to make, I'm going to use the jig, and then I'm going to make another picture frame without the jig so you can see what's involved with that. We make one cut on the left side. There's sandpaper on there so the piece doesn't slip and then we move it over to the right side to cut the other side of the piece. It has this little stop here and I can set it against the ruler. One more thing I want to mention, you want to add 1 8 of an inch to your measurements just to give the artwork a little bit of wiggle room. So now we're going to make our frame without the sled. I've got my blade set to 45 degrees and I'm going to cut two pieces at the same time. I'm going to make my first cut here and then we're going to mark our line for the next cut. This is a lot of blade exposed so you have to approach this cut with caution. All right, so now we need to make the second cut. We need to determine the length of our piece. Without that sled, it's a little bit more difficult. So you take the length of your artwork, ours is 14 inches, plus double the backside of your frame from the outside to the inside of your rabbit. So if I have one and a quarter, it's two of those plus the length of the artwork plus one eighth of an inch for wiggle room. 
There we go. So we're going to take this. We're going to double up. And we're going to make sure we use our fingers to make sure they are lined up perfect. Remember, we need equal length pieces and we'll get Norm out of the way there. And we'll try to line that up with the blade. Again, that's a lot of blade exposed, so be aware of that as you're passing through. Cool, feels good. Now, let's see if that actually worked. Perfect. This is how I glue up my picture frames. Nothing complicated, no special clamps or jigs. All I do is I glue one side, let that dry for a little bit, and I'll come back and I'll glue those together. And all I'm using is wood glue and painter's tape. Something else I like to do is because the end grain soaks up a lot of glue, I'll put a very thin coat of glue on there and then let that dry for a little bit. And then we'll come back and we'll add more glue and that stops the glue from soaking into the wood too much. All right, so that's been sitting a few minutes. Now we can glue the other side to it. And again, just more glue and tape. Flip this over and do the other side. Cool, we'll let that sit dry for a little bit. So now our frames are all dry. I've taken the tape off. These joints are not very strong. They are just held together by glue and it's basically just end grain in there. And it doesn't make for a very strong joint. As the seasons go by, this, the wood's going to expand and contract and that's going to loosen and break eventually. So we need to reinforce them. I've got the spline jig over here on my table saw. I've got a video on making this. I'll have a link down in the description as well as at the end of the video if you want to learn how to make this. For this first picture frame, we're going to do splines. And then the next one, I'm going to show you a different method that doesn't involve a jig. So I'm going to run this through the blade four times. I'm going to flip it over and run it through again and that's going to center the groove. Perfect. We cut these splines out over on the bandsaw and then plane them down to thickness on the planer. They got a nice tight fit. And all we're going to do is just Shove them in there. Something I forgot to mention, when I was cutting the splines over at the table saw, I'm using a flat bottom grind blade, which leaves a nice flat bottom so I won't have these little, little holes in there. A lot of combination blades don't leave a flat bottom and you'll see a little hole there. If you don't have a flat bottom grind blade, don't worry about it. You can just fill that little hole. It's really small. You can just fill it with some sawdust and glue. For this one, we're not going to do splines. We're going to hack it. We're going to take a Forstner bit 
and we're going to drill down about one eighth of an inch. Then we're going to take a hole saw bit and cut out out of one eighth inch plywood, little circular disc that will fit in there. This is the back of the Pritchard frame. So it, it's not going to be pretty, but it's the back. And so you're not gonna see it. And plus we're going to put a dust cover on here. And let me show you how that's done over at the drill press. The one and five eighths inch Forstner bit on my drill press. And then the hole saw bit is one and three quarters inch. Take this over here. And they'll fit right, right in there just like that. So we're just gonna fill this with glue. Now I doubt this is as strong as the splines, but it's a picture frame. that dry. We're going to use this flush trim saw and we're just going to cut the excess off. And in the place where you live. Now it is time to cut the glass. You don't have to use glass. You could use a piece of acrylic and you can cut that over at the table saw. But I'm going to attempt to cut glass. I got a little glass cutter here. I've got my line drawn on the glass with a Sharpie, which we should be able to wipe off. And I'm just going to use this board as a straight edge here. So now we take a pencil and we put it underneath there right on our score line. And in theory, it breaks just like that. I'm using a black mat with a white core. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the outside dimensions. You can use a utility knife or an X-Acto knife. I got this rotary cutter here. Now we're going to draw our inside mat and we're going to use this mat cutter and it has, so there's a little blade in there and it's at a 45 degree angle. So as we, as we cut, it reveals a little bevel along the outside, which will give it a nice little white border. So drew our inside dimensions here and it's going to overlap the artwork by a quarter of an inch all the way around. And there's a little mark over here on the right side. I can line that up with my line. Plunge down. And come all the way down. Until, until those two lines meet up right there. You see that right there? So we can do the same over here. Now that piece should fall right out of there. So for this painting, we're gonna treat it like a photograph. So we're gonna have this, then we're going to have our mat over that. And then behind that is going to be our illustration board, which is going to protect it from the point driver or the brad nails. That's all gonna be covered with glass. And then that is going to fit into our frame. Take our artwork here. We're going to use some acid-free tape. Then we're going to set our mat over top of that. And we will only tape it on the one side. We'll leave it hinged like this so it can move. Like wood, paper expands and contracts with the seasons as well. So you don't want to tape all the sides because it's going to get wrinkly over time. Now, you can use a point driver. I have this one from Logan, but something is wrong with mine where it keeps jamming up and I've never had good luck with it. Other people have told me different stories and said they love theirs. So what I do instead is I use vice grips 
and little brad nails. On my vice grips here, I have a little bit of padding on here so I don't ruin my frame, and I'm just going to pinch them right in there. So now we're going to put a dust cover on the back of this. I got some craft paper here. Kind of mark a line where it is so I know where to spray my adhesive. And I'm just using Super 77. Place it right on here. Press it on real good. And cut off the excess. See what we got here. Now, no dust can get in there. Nice, clean, looking back. Very, very professional. Next, we're going to use some pitcher wire to hang these guys up. I'm just going to put a couple screws in. Pull that tight. I've got a little mark about one inch from the top here, and I want the wire to be about right there. That'll make hanging the picture a little bit easier. So we'll wrap this around a couple times, get that nice and tight, cut off the excess. We'll put these little rubber bumpers, keep it off the wall, keep some air circulation in here. You don't want this sitting up against the wall because it could get damp and actually ruin the artwork. And we're all done. There it is. I would like to take a minute to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Design Crowd. Design Crowd is a website that helps you crowdsource business cards, illustration, t shirt design, web development, and much more from designers all over the world. Design Crowd has over 600,000 designers to help you get the perfect custom design every time with a money back guarantee. So here's how it works you post a creative brief describing what you need. Within hours, you'll start receiving designs. Over the course of three to 10 days, you'll receive anywhere from 60 to 100 plus designs. And you can provide feedback to the designers and request revisions. You then pick your best design and approve payment to the creator. Check it, I posted a creative brief with a t-shirt idea that I had and almost instantly I started receiving designs from all over the world. So if you need a custom graphic, website, t-shirt design, or anything that requires a designer, check out designcrowd.com slash make something to learn more and save up to $100 when you start your next project. Again, make something viewers receive up to $100 off their design project at designcrowd.com slash make something. Thanks Design Crowd. Now let's get back to these picture frames. There they are. All the wood for these picture frames came from my friends at KenCraft at KenCraftCompany.com. They do sell online. If you're in the Toledo area, stop by and say hello. They're really good friends of mine. So in the description down below, I will have links to the picture frame making sled as well as the spline jigs. As woodworkers, we tend to make a lot of picture frames and those two jigs really speed up the process. For good picture frames, you need to have two things. You need to have perfect miters and you also need to have perfect length. And that's where that jig comes in really handy. In a future video, we're going to do some more advanced picture frames that involve layering and inlays and complicated profiles using router bits. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's a formula to figure out how much wood you need for picture frames. It's a little complicated, so here we go. It's the width of your frame, times two plus the art width, that equals A. Then you take your frame width times two plus your art length and that equals B. A plus B times two equals the total length of wood that you need. And then you need to add two more inches to that to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. So for example, if your artwork is 11 by 14 and your frame is two inches wide, you take your frame width times two plus 11, and that gives you 15. And then for the length, you take your frame width times two plus 14 equals 18. And then 15 plus 18 times two equals 66. 
add another two inches on there for safety and you've got a total of 68 inches. So you need a 68 inch board. I know it's complicated. I rarely ever use that formula. Usually I just eyeball it, but that has gotten me in trouble in the past. And so I just wanted to throw that out there for you. There will be a link to my website that will go into detail a little bit more and have all these formulas there and some visuals to help you understand it a little bit better. So let me talk about the story behind some of these. This is Roy Underhill and then this is Norm Abrams. I had my artist friend Jim Ether paint these for me a while back. He's an amazing artist. He sells a lot of his art on Etsy and he does custom portraits just for you, custom artwork, and he's really, really affordable. So I'll have a link to Jim's Etsy page down below. If you recall the wiener dog art that we made over on the laser cutter about a year ago, he was involved in that project. I really, really love his style. And so these two guys are going to go up in my shop. The story with this is when we moved into this house about a year ago, we found that the owner was, his name was Bellman, and he had a chain of convenience stores here in town, I think back in the, in the 50s. And then we also found out that he had his own labeled olive oil. And then we happened to find this artwork. It's a painting of that olive oil label online uh, at a bookstore in New York. I'm assuming this was for an ad or this was a mock-up. And so we purchased this and we framed it and it's gonna hang in our kitchen. It's crazy that we found this artwork from the guy that built this house. All right, folks, that wraps it up. I will see all of your beautiful faces next week when we tackle another woodbreaking project. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. That's a good day.